16 was about the prisoners of war and we continue from there. Chapter 17, Selected. On the afternoon of the fifth day, weary, worn and travel-stained, the exiles saw a great camp in the distance, white tents extending in all directions over a well-watered plain where the corn stood high and green above the rich earth, which year after year yields such abundant crops. Dashti sar sabz, au kafi camp zadaunji. Archiki asiru malikane ma jam kadaunji. A motley crowd indeed had set out from the village among the Hazara hills, but it was an emaciated, haggard, exhausted crowd that came into camp that evening. Some of the older women, on the excuse of remaining with the children who could drag their weary limbs no further, had begged to stay behind and watch their little ones die. چن پیر زنا زاری منا کی بیل کی مقدم زی پایمانده پسمانده این المردنی بیل ایک دروز میج باشیم قدر زی مر جان مر علاکی دفتر نمیتنی Promising to rejoin the party as soon as the last struggle should be over and the soldiers had let them stay partly under the firm conviction that like the little ones whose death was inevitable, these feeble old bodies would never reach their destination. As dutaraf ama am no se go kitaraf zabita dam bay mi diya dzi safar. As karadar zabita hai kitar ki bari zuzud nemitna dzi dash to bayabano ko darra as mane dzi. مصیبت تیر شدن نمیتنا نه مگه کی مور بیل کی مور مینجی قدم زیزه و ستو بوم نی که ناخ بیزم مردنی اونا مگه از کرا فکر نکی هجه ایگو خودان چم مردنی بیل باشه مینجی and partly also because they knew that as slaves their market value would be absolutely nil امو رقم هم اینا نقصانه اینا رکی ببریم دا بازار غلامه و کنیزا بفروشیم اینا مگه کی ایچ نمی چلا یعنی باری اضافی بیل کی بوم نمینجی but if the oldest of the party had dropped out from among the ranks and were sitting by the roadside in the last state of exhaustion, others seemed somehow to have taken their place in the most extraordinary way. The middle-aged women, many of whom had been stout and well-built, if not comely, when they had set out, were now میر شادوز تکرار توانا از وقت کی روان شده بودن حالی از آل تیر شدن. Their tanned and wrinkled skin hanging in fold across their but too apparent bones. بگیست وانایش معلوم می‌دی. Even the young women looked twice their age. جوانا گستا عمرش دو دو برابر. And many were worn with grief as well as suffering. Among those was Gulbegum. Her father was her ideal. And he, thank God, was so far safe. But little Marwari had been her darling, her comforter and adorer. She missed her every hour. In all her suffering in these days that were past, it had been of the little sister she had thought, and the warm, soft hand slipped tenderly in hers had been her solace during many a sad and anxious hours. And now she was gone. Gone where the sun could never scorch her more. Astapishya ziyaftab rahat chud, janj khalash. 
where no stones would cut her little aching feet. Diga u payai shi raziyat namanai sangai atshi. Never scorch her more where no stones would cut her little aching feet and where there were rivers and fountains in plenty to slake that burning unquenchable thirst. Al pishi chmai basha kyu tishna gya ki darali da buduna. As she had trudged on the tears, had chased each other down her sunburn, wind-tained cheeks, and had fallen one after the other on her travel-stained skirt and shawl, but no sob had escaped her, only the tears welled up and fell. I mean, the poor she was too tired for more. Bihi audidesh khushk musha. Manda musha bihi as gidi gado manda musha bihi. Nature could make no further effort. Khushk shud bihi chumaish. Properly clad and at her own leisure, she would have accomplished the distance in half the time. Agar the wakti khod chuma bud, e ikadar fasilar the nisp bhaktiyar magad. Ikadar taru taza budi. She could have accomplished the distance in half the time and without so much a, as turning a hair, but this very steady march, e safari durdiras, e asiri, barefoot, pilut, all through the scorching noontide, with the helpless little ones. Bechara haiki, sunazna selmana kishmomare. Little ones depending on her when their own strength flagged had taxed even her strength to the very uttermost. The night she arrived in camp, however, she slept and slept soundly. And next morning, except that her feet were both swollen and cut. And cut about by the stones, she felt fresher and brighter than she had done for so many days. Shireen too, and many of the other girls had recovered their spirits and had begun wondering what the next move was to be. They had had an abundant supper overnight. So for the first time, for several days, they were not hungry. Besides, they were not under nearly such strict rules as they had been, and some even talked of the flight. But it was mere talk. Not one had either strength or courage or to attempt escape. And moreover, for all the apparent carelessness, they felt that they were closely watched. Towards noon, there seemed more stir about the camp. The camp. Food was distributed, and the soldiers seemed altogether more active and busy about their arms and accoutrement. The Kamadan had awakened and will be round to see the prisoners almost directly. Somebody whispered and soon the fact was loudly discussed on all sides and all sorts of speculations raised. After a while, a soldier came round and picked out about 20 girls. Or so, among whom were both Shireen and Gulbegum. 
and told them to smooth their hair and make themselves look as tidy as they could. Tayarshin. The comedian was coming and was going to choose some half a dozen of them for himself. Some of the girls took the news placidly enough and even began giggling and nudging one another in the usual Hazara style. When anything in the shape of marriage is in the air, Prisoners of war. But Gulbegum was almost indignant. If I am a slave at all, she protested loudly, I am the Amir's slave and must be assigned my place by him not by any stray comedian or captain who may chance to crop up. But the soldiers took no notice of her. Most probably he will not choose you at all, one of the girls remarked, nudging her neighbor meaningly. There are twenty of us here, and he only wants six. Why should he choose you? I would be quite willing to be one of the six. I am sure, if only it meant an end to all this marching and driving across deserts. When, when the time came, however, the willing victim was not selected. And neither was Shireen. Shirinam kas ba suchi nigana kat Gulbegum was is taraf as the comedian marched off having made his voice known to his subordinate a sudden inspiration seemed to come to Gulbegum sada ek komandan amat ki qadas kara tora mugaf dekh fikr de sar shamat Gulbegum sahib she said he turned sahib I understand that I am one of the girls you have selected for your own household. He was going to pass on, but something in her carriage and bearing struck him. And he paused. Well, what of that? He asked. I thought I had better let you know at once, Zutar Bereshum Bugum, and before matters proceed further, that your taking me may get you into trouble, which you would rather avoid. I am Gulbegum, the Vizier's daughter, the chosen of Colonel Farhad Shah. Farhad Shah, the comedian said, almost below his breath, is that true? Do you soldiers know anything of this? Heard nothing of it before? One of those standing next to him answered wonderingly. We heard she was the wife of that spy of ours, Muhammad Jan. Farhad Shah's name has never been mentioned in connection with her. It is well, Gulbegum said quietly, nothing, noting something of the awe which the very mention of this man's name had inspired. It is you who run the risk of his displeasure, not I. These, pointing to the other woman, these are my witnesses that I have protested. It is for you now to do what you please. What proof have you of this? Have you anyone here who is aware that you have been selected by Farad Shah? 
There is my cousin Shirin, she said. Ask her, and somewhere you will find my mother. And these girls, they too. All know that Colonel Farad Shah has twice sent special messengers for me to go and join him. That he is a man who does not care to be crossed. I also know, and probably you know as much of him, or more, than I do. The man looked her up and down. It seemed to him not unlikely that Farad Shah had chosen that girl. He was a judge of all these things and knew a fine woman when he saw one. All right, he said to his men. Put her aside to send to Farad Shah. Let us hope she will like it when she gets there. He added below his breath, My God, women have strange tastes. So the Wazir's daughter was returned for the moment to her tent and to her companions, and the other five, with another girl who was chosen in Gulbegum's place, were all marched off to the comedian's quarters. But during the day, many were the calls paid round the prisoner's camp, Elan Mushadarao, and many of the girls that were marched off in this direction, and that henceforth to be slaves of those who had selected them. There was nothing unlike in the way they were treated. They were quietly told that they were to do and they did it. Only when mothers and daughters were parted, there was wailing and sobbing. An effort not altogether unavailing in some cases if the mother were young and the child too small to do easily without her. Fatima was selected during the first hour or two and sent to the household of the chief men in one of the neighboring villages. Halima cried loudly and begged to be taken too, but was sent back. She was not wanted. Gulbegum began to wonder what was to be done with her. And what her fate was to be, like many another in Afghanistan, she had saved herself from the difficulty of the moment. By placing herself in a far worse plight, had substituted what might prove a terrible ordeal in the establishment of a monster for the comparative, ordinary, everyday trouble that had threatened her. But Hazaras and Afghans, too, never think beyond the passing moment. Just like the Sarakani, Icha Sietra, Ktuarja Este, Tum Fakat Pesh Pachtoni, Namugiki E. Akubach Chiskar Mashakamai Karakan. But Hazaras and Afghans too never think beyond the passing moment. When the next difficulty arose, she would find some means of meeting it, she thought. And in the meantime, she had a few hours' respite. Come, damsh pasamat. Early next morning, she was awakened by a soldier calling outside her tent. Golbegom, Golbegom, she said. You are wanted. The girl was on her feet in a moment. What is it? she asked. Get up and make yourself ready to start at once. Chabuk, biaki I have orders to take you to Colonel Farhad Shah. 
in his garden house. It is not very far from here, but the comedian has ordered a pony for you to ride. And he is sending two other girls with you. Who would you like to take? You may choose any that you may prefer from among those that are left. Gulbegum smiled. This is what it is to be the chosen of Colonel Farad Shah. She said to herself. And in spite of all her many troubles and anxieties as to her future, a certain glow of satisfaction passed over her. After all, this was but how she ought to be treated. Was she not Ghulam Hussein's daughter? Shireen and her mother, besides Halima and several other women, occupied the same tent. Take me, her cousin pleaded. Don't leave me behind, Gulbegum, Shireen said. And me, entreated Halima. You would not leave me here all alone. And I shall indeed be forsaken. My baby is dead. The man Marwari. The wretched woman commenced weeping. Fatima has been torn from me. And now you are going to forsake me too. I am a wretched creature that I am. Would that I too had died. Hush, mother, hush, the girl said smoothly. If I may, of course I will take you. And me too, asked Shireen's mother. Don't let me be parted from you all. I wish I could, Gulbegum said anxiously. I will ask the soldier. And she stepped outside. Look here, ain't psycho? She said. I am poor today and a prisoner, but I am not born poor and I shall not always be a prisoner. I am going to the house of a rich man where I know I shall soon have a good position and in the days of my prosperity I will remember you. If you will help me now, in the time of my troubles. Afghan promises that it all meant very little because no one knows what his or her future is to be. For Afghanistan is the country above all others where the unexpected always happens. But the soldier, like the rest of his countrymen, lived in hope. A better day might come. That was all he had to look forward to, though. After the manner peculiar to his race, he took not the faintest means to secure those better days. What do you want? he asked. Whatever it is, be sharp. There is no time to waste. I want you to let me take my mother, beside two others that the comedian has ordered to accompany me. I mean, I am Khazma Belkibora. Oh, you can take her and one other. The soldier said smilingly. The comedian put no limit as to age. Ah, the girl said sadly. I see you're not going to help me. Our family has all been divided up. And some have died. There are just we four left. And we do not want to be parted. Will you not grant me this little favor? 
If you will, I'll speak for you to Colonel Farad Shah. And he will make you a Hawaladar, sergeant. And something more, perhaps, someday, if you succeed in pleasing him. And do his bidding and mine. Do you know what Colonel Farad Shah's bidding is likely to be? To move him to his My good woman, that you talk so lightly. Have you ever seen him? I know something of him, Gulbegum said, and a shiver passed through her as she recalled what she had heard. But woman like, she believed in her own power. I know that he was a slave once, but that he is a colonel today and placed in a position of great trust and responsibility. And I know that he may be a commander-in-chief someday and have it in his power to make captains and even colonels of those who know how to serve him. The man stood thoughtfully for a moment. Look here, he said. You hurry up and you can take your old mother with you. The chances are she will be sent back. But you can take her with you and see what happens. If she gets a beating for going where she is not wanted, don't blame me. You mistake, the girl said brightly. My mother is not an old woman. She is only wearied after a long journey. She is an active, able-bodied woman who can work hard, and she has been accustomed to do so. She won't get sent back. And Gulbegum disappeared into the tent, well content with the result of her promises. They had but little preparation that they could possibly make. These poor wanderers, possessed of what they stood upright in and nothing more. So in less than five minutes they were on their way. Gulbegum riding, the other walked behind. One soldier leading the pony, two soldiers with loaded rifles walking behind to prevent any possibility of escape. How far have you to go? Gulbegum asked. Not far, the man said doggedly. He did not want to be reported as having indulged in overmuch conversation with the prisoners. For in Afghanistan, every man and woman looked upon every other. Even his comrades as possible spies. Arna for them, Zi, Shagaki, enemy, Nah, Amihona, Basha Jasus, who was Mogi, enemy, Basha Bahali. No etabar, no trust. There is no spirit decor. Team, spirit, Nashta, Pawanistan. It is a country where every man is for himself. And the devil take the hindermost, which generally means the man who brings in fewest report to his superiors. Pas <laughs> 
پوری خود خورا شخصی رو بگیرین تمام را در دست بدین When they were out of sight of the camp, Gulbegum called her mother up beside her. Forgive me, mother. That I ride while you walk. She said, I only did so till we got out of the camp. And so saying, she flung herself from the saddle. Amir Gufta as Zini as Tamaya. Here. What is this? The soldier called out indignantly. What are you doing? Get back on the horse at once. Gulbegum turned to the two men behind. Persuade this man to let me walk a little way. I'm longing to stretch my limbs. Let these two get on the pony together. Pointing to her mother and aunt. کمی دو نفر بیل سورا بارو ما اگلازم پای خب دراز کنم دراز خونه میتونم We shall get over the ground quicker so Shireen and I can walk as quickly as any of you قد شما میتر راست یک رقم ماریم زوز چبوک چبوک And we may as well get as far as we can before the sun gets hot It will be best for you as well as for us so they let it be. The two older women riding, the one behind the other on the pony, the two girls walking along briskly. Their previous five days' march had put them in excellent training. And their 36 hours rest had completely restored them. I wonder what sort of life we are going to. Gulbegum whispered in her cousin's ear. I shan't stay if I am to be made unhappy. Shall you? I don't see how we can help ourselves if we are to be shut up and guarded by soldiers. Shireen answered hopelessly. It does not seem to me we shall have much chance. Here, not so much talking, one of the soldiers called out. He was sharp enough to notice that there was something earnest in the nature of their conversation. And as that might mean trouble for their escort, he felt it wise to suppress it. Good bunkin. Habush. That was the end of chapter 17. My dear teenagers, Nosogo and Bakulo of the Hazara Pioneers Legacy. Um, the pain of the Hazara War, 1890. One, probably, is also called, uh, yeah, 91 and up to 93 it goes on. And uh, the memory was uh, even personally felt yesterday when Chagar and I, with a couple of friends, had gone to see the very, very Bakul, but the Nosa of Panir, Janabi Musa Sahib Radhiruz ki malakat kadim, the Kuita, Sayyidabad. خیلی زیب شده اونا که داستانی گردلی پدر خورا گفتن برای از ما از نزدیک حس کدیم و اینا او کرکتر های کردر های هستن مثل گردلی و کپتن دوست محمد کاکه اینا نامدارانی پاینیر بودن لیجندری marksmen of the Indian subcontinent during the British Raj. So there is the collapse of the nation and then there's the rising of few characters, pioneering, doing things that had never done before. Uh, such is the standard we are talking about. What survival skills, 
what um, uh, growth potential do we have in the grand children of the pioneers, of the Hazara pioneers. We shall wait and see. And that's why we bring the story of so much pain. And by the day, those regular viewers of ours now that we have, some of you have commented on the uh, on the link shared on Facebook, uh, Facebook on Meiji TV. I think it's up to six uh, chapters that have been shared so far. Um, you will come to such pain and those will be revoked. And I think the only reason for retelling these painful stories is to be panyad. Pandra yad ko as trouble ko yad bigar bad bakhtir di de. Disaster a ter de, genocide rabir ka de. Oh, no se panyar. And with the, our usual statement, we close this session. It is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Haikido no rozawar.